Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to celebrate this 20th Sunday of the year. We come before the Lord today, knowing that we are weak and sinful. Let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness, but most of all, the courage to be as faithful as we possibly can. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Let this Jeremiah be put to death for he is weakening the hands of the soldiers who are left in the city and the hands of all the people by speaking such words to them. For this man is not seeking the welfare of this people, but their harm. King Zedekiah said, Behold, he is in your hands, for the king can do nothing against you. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the system of Malchiah the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. And there was no water in the cistern, but only mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Ebed-Melech went from the king's house and said to the king, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they did to Jeremiah the prophet by casting him into the cistern. And he will die there of hunger, for there is no bread left in the city. Then the king commanded ebed melech the Ethiopian, Take three men with you from here, and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, make haste to help me. Lord, make haste to help me. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. Lord, 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 make make haste haste to help me. me. He drew me from the deadly pit, from the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock, 
made my footsteps firm. Lord, Lord make, make haste, haste to help me. He puts a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. Many shall see and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Lord, Lord make, make haste, haste to help me. Wretched and poor though I am, the Lord is mindful of me. You are my rescuer, my help. <coughs> oh my God, do not delay. Lord, make haste to help me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For henceforth in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three they will be divided, father against son, and son against father mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I came across this prayer poem written by a famous British sailor, of the 16th century, Sir Francis Drake. And it goes, Disturb us, Lord, when we are too pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dream too little, when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life have fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas, where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push back the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. This we ask in the name of our captain, who is Jesus Christ. It seems to me that this Sunday we are being invited to allow the Lord to disturb us, to shake us out of our comfort zones, and perhaps even our minimalism. 
in that first reading, the prophet Jeremiah is persecuted by the powers that be. In the year 587, the city of Jerusalem is besieged by King Nebuchadnezzar, and the people inside are suffering. Jeremiah is the lonely voice crying out for the suffering. His message is subversive, and he faces resistance and is threatened as we hear they even want to take his life. Yet somehow Jeremiah knew that this was the right thing to do. They tried to silence him who stood on the truth, and yet Jeremiah couldn't be silenced. In chapter 20, verse 19 of the book of Jeremiah, we hear that Jeremiah is even conflicted within himself. He wants to give up because of the resistance of the authorities to his message. Yet he says that he feels that there is a fire burning within him and that he cannot stop speaking the truth. And so Jeremiah faces this rather disturbing picture in front of him. Authorities, the kings who refuse to let go of their power, a people that is, that is surrounded and cannot find food and are suffering. And right in the middle, he stands and speaks out. I wonder if we are disturbed enough to see the suffering that is around us. I wonder if we are willing, like Jeremiah, to speak out and to act when we see the suffering around us. Maybe we need to ask, do we even notice that suffering? In the face of injustice and evil, we can choose to be silent, as many people do, or like Jeremiah, to speak out. And this, however, will make our lives difficult. And maybe even like Jeremiah, we might suffer for the message we speak. Maybe the invitation for us today in our own context is to ask ourselves, are we disturbed enough by what is going on around us to be prophetic, to stand on the truth? Or are we simply happy in our comfort zones, keeping our heads buried in the sand? The second invitation comes from that letter to the Hebrews to keep up and keep on running steadily, as it says. It invites us to live from the energy within that motivates us to keep striving, to keep trying to do more, despite perhaps the inner and the outer resistances. St. Ignatius Loyola talks about the margus, in other words, something that is greater. He says we should always strive for what is greater, not for what is good, but for what is greater. And in a sense, that sums up what the letter to the Hebrews is asking us to do, giving us the example of Jesus who eventually gives his life for the greater. I wonder if we are disturbed enough, as that poet says, to continue hoping, to continue believing that things can be different. Not denying reality, but believing that things can be different. I wonder if each of us is able to strive for what we really desire. Not just simply for the good, but for what is greater. I wonder if we really believe that we can be more than what we are now. And then in that gospel, finally, Jesus uses very disturbing words. He speaks about conflict and fire. He speaks about these conflicts between father and son and daughter and mother. He speaks, too, about conflicts between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. That's something I'm told is inevitable anyway. But he invites us, perhaps, to realize the potential 
for rocking our lives when we are living in a relationship with Him. And pondering this reading, I wonder if someone today who helps us to understand what being disturbed means is Pope Francis, because he disturbs many people. He invites us to embrace the sinner, not to judge and condemn without condoning the sin. He challenges us to remove the pomp and the ceremony that gives security and which mistakenly identifies the church with political power rather than the gospel of simplicity that Jesus reveals. He's not afraid to name in the church where we need conversion. And so he continually disturbs in the things that he says. He pushes us out of our comfort zones, just as Jesus pushed his own listeners from their comfort zones. I wonder if you are disturbed by those conflictual and perhaps even hard-to-hear words that Jesus speaks today. And I'm wondering if Jesus is inviting us, in our disturbance, so to speak, to reconsider what living in a real living relationship with him means for us today. We're invited to pray today, disturb us, Lord. Disturb our false sense of security so that our focus and attention may be solely on you. Let's join together now in praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God's word has been spoken to us. We respond to that word now by bringing our needs and the needs of our world before the Lord. For all of us gathered to worship together today, that we would not be afraid of being disturbed by the gospel message that seeks to stretch us out of our comfort zones and so be more like Jesus himself. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that they would hear the voice of the prophets in our midst and turn from selfish interests, corruption, and greed, so as to serve all God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who work tirelessly for justice and peace, that God may strengthen them and grace them as they seek to make God's kingdom a reality today. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we would always seek to do more, go beyond ourselves, and in so doing, imitate Jesus himself who gave his life for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Pope Francis, that he would continue to disturb us, push us out of our comfort zones, so that we, the Church, can become more like Jesus himself in our care for those who are weak and those who struggle in life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Let us pray in silence for our own special needs. For these we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you. And so we make them with all the love and the longing of our hearts through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty creator. Receive our offering, Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread, bread and drink this, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. that we may be disturbed by the Lord. Let's pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us a sign of God's peace. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.